Welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where today we're going to be engaging our brains for some strategic fun, but without going completely overboard. Overboard was released in 1978 by Lakeside, based on an earlier Ravensburger game from 1977. This was part of a whole series of abstract strategy games that Lakeside brought out in the US and the Action GT brought out over here in the UK. Now normally I like games which are really bold and bright and colourful with big three-dimensional boards, nicely sculpted pieces and interesting mechanics. Now, obviously this game does not have any of those things, but the Lakeside strategy games have really, really grown on me. And if you've seen my isolation review from earlier, you'll know that I actually really quite like these games. Unlike some strategy games, there's only one thing for you to focus on. You don't have to think about lots of little bits of cardboard all over the place or lots of different characters with different abilities for you to wrap your head around and keep in mind. Because as my dungeon master would tell you, I absolutely suck at that kind of thing. As far as box art goes, there's really not very much to this at all. Again, it's just a photograph on the front cover and on the back there is some black and white photographs and a little bit of text. The same with all of the Lakeside strategy games. So let's get started and take a closer look at this. There's not really very much to the components. There are 18 white discs and 18 red discs, one colour for each player. And you can see these are purely functional uh, in form. They are not really decorative. Uh, they are purely abstract just for playing the game. And you can see on here, it has got a little kind of peg here, which will slot into a groove on the board. And that's about it. And the board itself here, you can see is just one really solid piece of plastic. This thing is really sturdy, really robust. It's really nice and firm. It's a good quality thick plastic here that is not going to break easily. This is just a nice piece of kit. You can see it's got trays down either side here which will catch the playing pieces once they get pushed overboard. And you can see these are raised here with grooves going both ways uh, so that the playing pieces can only go left, right, up or down. And there are also ramps either side here so that if a piece gets pushed over this way, it will roll down into this playing piece catcher here. Or at least it generally does. You might have to help it along a bit. They do get caught there. To start the game, you begin with all of the playing pieces already laid out on the board in one of four different configurations. This is the first configuration that you can begin with. This is the second starting layout, or you can begin with them set out like this, or you can have them set out like this. And all four of these starting configurations are printed in the instructions on the back of the box lid. Now I'm not entirely sure exactly what logic they've used in order to create these initial layouts, but what I do know is that each of these four starting points all has a rotational axis of symmetry. If we take the top three by six array and rotate it 180 degrees, then that gives us the bottom section of our initial layout. So I'd guess that if you took any configuration of two red and one white or two white and one red in each of these rows, laid it out at the top and rotated it around 180 to create the bottom half as well, then that would be a fair playable starting position. So to play the game, each player decides to be either red or white and takes it in turn moving their pieces. You can move any of your pieces in any direction in a straight line as far as you want as long as it pushes at least one of your opponent's pieces overboard without pushing one of your own over. So for example, red here could move along here pushing two white pieces overboard. But by doing that, the red player has also just lined up four of their own pieces that white could get rid of. Now white, for example, could push these two red ones overboard here or these two red ones overboard here. But by doing that, they're gonna set up a row of four white ones which could be pushed out by red here or a row of four white ones which could be pushed out by red here. So that wouldn't be a particularly good move. 
What white might want to do instead is move this way to get rid of these two or move this way in order to get rid of these two because then they're not gonna set up a whole big long row. By moving this way, this piece is perfectly safe. Whereas if I'd moved that way, then this red one would have been able to push it off eventually. Of course, what we have inadvertently done here is set red up to get rid of three pieces again, because red or any color can move right across the board, even across gaps and pushing gaps together in order to get pieces off. Now, although red has now got three pieces lined up, it is between two white ones. So these three pieces won't be able to get pushed off the board unless these two white ones get out of the way or this one. At any point in the game, if you don't want to or you can't push at least one of your opponent's pieces overboard, then you can move one of your pieces just one space. So for example, white might want to move one there so that on their next go that is now freed up so that these three can get pushed off by this one. However, in this early stage of the game, that's unlikely to really happen very much. It's only once you really get down to the end game that you're gonna start having to move pieces one space at a time because you can't get something pushed overboard. You see now at this point in the game, it's now become impossible to move any of the playing pieces to push an opponent overboard. So this is where it comes down to just moving one space at a time. And for this, you've got to be really careful and really tactical so that you don't move into a line that is gonna get you pushed off. Red, if it moves one space to here, it's gonna get pushed off by this white here. If it moves one space to here, it's gonna get pushed off this way. So this red is kind of trapped in the corner here. This red, if it moves to here, then it's gonna get pushed off. So really, it's gonna to have to move somewhere else. If it moves here, in fact, it's gonna get pushed off by this one. So it's gonna to have to move here or here. It doesn't really have any other choices. Similarly, white wants to get this red off, but if it moves here, it's gonna get pushed off here, and if it moves here, it's gonna get pushed off here. So that white's really gonna to have to stay there, hoping that that one has to move. So white's gonna to have to use this one at the moment. So if it moves here, it's gonna get pushed off. So really, it's only got one move available, which is to move there. Red is still blocked here, so we have to move this one. Can't go here or here, so it's gonna to have to back up to here or here really, let's just move it to there. White, same predicament, can't move here with this one, so it's gonna move here in order to keep the pressure on. Red, still can't move this one, can't move here or here, it's getting forced further and further this way. It's gonna have to move one way though, so it's gonna move there. White, still putting on the pressure here, if it moves down here to go for this one, it is gonna get pushed off. So we're gonna to have to move this one. Again, if it gets to here, it's gonna get pushed off that way, but if it moves here, it's still applying pressure, but it's safe. Red's really only got one option available to it. Can't go here or here or here because of this one, so it's gonna to have to go here. That's the only safe one for red left. White, again, this one is still trapped, so it's down to this one, and it's gonna to have to go here, I think, and now I think red is completely trapped. Red still can't move this one. This one, if it moves here, it's gonna get pushed off this way. Moves here, it's gonna get pushed off this way. Moves here, pushed off this way, or moves here, pushed off this way. So red is now really done in for. There isn't anything that red can do without getting pushed off. So it goes here, it's off. Red can now, however, take that one get rid of it and now it's just one on one. Again red can't go here or here it's getting forced back into a corner by white. 
As long as white doesn't do something stupid like go into here, then it's gonna win. Red is now completely trapped. If he goes here, it's gonna get pushed off this way. If he goes here, it's gonna get pushed off this way. So either way, white has now won. So as you can see, it's a nice, easy to learn light strategy game that can be played by pretty much anybody and it's not gonna take you very long. It is one that I do find enjoyable though. But let's talk about theme. Being called overboard and therefore water themed, I think what this game is crying out for is actual water being used in it. The game board is perfectly designed for that. It would just add such a fun little element of moving people and having them actually sink into the water. I think that would just be really fun, except that these bits don't work properly, sadly. They don't roll very well in the water, but they do float quite nicely. Or change up the colours, the sculpts and the themes and get some slime in there. I think that would make it much more fun and we need more slime games in our lives. Even without my ridiculous theming ideas though, this is a good game. I do really like this and it's a nice one for the collection, particularly for the Lakeside Strategy Collection. It's one that you can still get quite cheap. All of the Lakeside Strategy games and most kind of abstract strategy games tend to be overlooked and so they're still quite cheap in price. It's definitely one that you should be able to pick up pretty easily. If you do see it around, I would definitely recommend this. It is a good game and it is one I enjoy. Well, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed the video this time. Until next time, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.